Now let's take a look at another example. And in this one, we'll do the vending machine controller. Okay, now you may remember this one from uh, chapter seven, where you design this by hand. But what this is, is you are going to have a vending machine, like a pot machine, and you're gonna dispense either water or nothing, okay? And a water is gonna cost 75 cents, but you're only gonna, restri you're gonna restrict the user to either entering a dollar or a quarter, okay? So what's gonna happen is you're gonna have some sort of money receiving circuit that takes a dollar or takes a quarter and tells you what happened. Okay, so you're gonna have these two input signals and we'll call this D underscore N and we'll call this Q underscore N and that stands for dollar N and Q N. And you just assume that the circuit either asserts a D N or a Q N depending on whether it's a dollar or whether it's a quarter. The reason you need a state machine is because if you get a dollar, you wouldn't need one. You'd just say, here's your water, here's a quarter. But since you are gonna allow quarters to come in, you have to have some circuit that counts how many came in. So you're gonna need a state machine that will sit there and it will say, okay, one quarter, two quarter, three quarter water, okay? The way that you're going to interface the outputs, the outside world, is you will have a signal called dispense, which will assert a motor that opens a door and a bottle of water, water will float out. <clears throat> Probably roll out, not necessarily float. Then you're gonna have one called change, and that will give back a quarter. So you're only dealing with do dollars and quarters. When would you ever give change back? If they give you a dollar, you give them a water, you give them a quarter, okay? What about the situation where they put two quarters in and then they change their mind? No change. You either get the water or there's no water, okay? <laughs> That's where we'll put that feature in if there's requests or complaints, but for right now, we assume our users are going to do exactly what we tell them to. Okay, so let us begin. Let's put that guy over there. Here's the state diagram. I'm gonna have a reset state called wait. In this state, if I ever get D in, I'm gonna give a water and I'm gonna give a quarterback. All I do is dispense is equal to one, change is equal to one, and then I go back to wait. I never leave wait if I see a dollar because I don't need to do, I just assert the signals and I go. If I see a quarter though, I have to start tracking. So if I see a quarter come in, I'm gonna to go to a state called 25 cents. And we'll have to spell that out <clears throat> because you can't start uh, a keyword with a number in BHL. And then if you get another quarter, we'll go to a state called 50 cents. And then if you get another quarter, you're heading on back to wait and you will dispense a water. No need to give change because they gave you exactly 75 cents. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have an entity that's like, this clock and reset comes in because it's a synchronous finite state machine. We're gonna have the inputs D underscore in, Q underscore in. I realize that's a pretty poor naming convention because we have D flip flops in here, but don't worry about it. Dollar is D in, quarter is Q in. And then we'll have two outputs called dispense and change. Okay, okay. So let's fire up our project, which I already have done and then we'll start coding up our VHL. Okay, so here we go. We are going. <laughs> okay. All right, the first thing that we need to do is create our, is create our file. So we're gonna have this thing called vending.vhd. We have a test bench called vending underscore TB. So if I open that up, it's expecting something that's called vending. It's got a clock and a reset as a port, DNQN, dispense change. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do some copy and paste it. So let's fire up a new file. So I say new file and I'm gonna call this vending. And I'll go ahead and say, okay, I'll bring that up. And what I first wanna do is put in my library. I'm gonna copy, I'm gonna paste, then I'm gonna do my entity, entity, which I need to get the exact port definition from the test bench so that it matches exactly. So I'm gonna bring that in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and say entity, boom, and I say is, and I come down here and I go ent, entity. Now I say architecture, vending, arc of 
vending is come down, I begin it, I come down, I end, architecture. And I have now typed in the hardest words in VHDL, which is architectures. Okay, so I go ahead and let's warm up the old compiler. Compile them all. Everybody looks good. I am now ready to do what? I need to create my states. So I'm going to do a new type. I am going to give it a name, which is called state type. And I'm going to give it the values what? I need a, Q, I need a weight state. 25 cent and 50. So I need a weight. And then I'm going to do S underscore 25 C. That I had to put the S underscore there in order to not have it start with a number. And then I'm going to do S underscore 50 cents. And I'm then done defining these puppies. So now I'm going to define two new signals. Current state and next state. And I'm going to give them the type state type. To make sure everybody liked that, let's go ahead and say compile, selected. Three errors. No big deal. No big deal at all. Let's see what the error was. That's why we compile often. Wait. Expecting character or identifier. Why doesn't it like wait? Yeah, it's like, hey, that's a keyword. So let's go ahead and do this. Compile, selected. So I put S on S before it, just for state. Okay. You know what I want to do? I want to get rid of these underscores too. I don't like them. Now that I typed them, I, I hate them. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of them. Compile well, selected. Okay, now we're feeling good. Who wants to do the next state logic? Not me. I want to do state memory. So let's start off with state memory. But you know what? State memory is almost always the same based upon your finite state machine. It's almost always identical. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pull up a prior example from the one we just did, which was sequence controller. And I'm going to see how different the state memory is between that other example and this. So I paste this in here, and I want to walk line by line. Process clock reset is in the sensitivity list. That's absolutely correct. Begin. If reset is a 0, current state goes to what? Well, it shouldn't go to start. It should go to s weight, which is what I have in this machine, which is where I'll go. Otherwise, on the rising edge of a clock, current state gets next state. It's done. All I had to do was change the reset state. I save that. Let's make sure it compiles. Compile selected. Boom. How's that feel? Feels pretty good. All right. The next state logic can't copy and paste too much. Or can I? We can probably, we can probably copy a little bit. Actually, I'm ripping it off. <laughs> Let's just do next state logic. It's a process. Who am I looking at? Always current state. Always the inputs. Q, N, and D, N. I'm going to come down here and i got to list out a case statement for all of these states. So I do the following. I begin this process. I start by saying case. And I put current state. And then what I'm going to do is say when I'm in the first state, which we'll call S weight or it's called S weight, then I'm going to decide what to do. Okay, This is where all I'm doing is deciding the next state. I'm not doing the outputs yet. So what I need to do is I need to say, if I get what? Think about this. Even if we get a dollar, the next state is weight. It's not going anywhere. So the best way to do this is say, if Q in, if quarter in, go to 25 cents, Otherwise, just stay and wait. So let's do it that way. If Q in, I got a quarter, is equal to a 1, then my next state will be S 25 cent. Else, you will always just stay in wait. So I'm going to say next state gets S wait. OK. So I did it, and if. I feel pretty good. I've handled my first state. I only got three of these things. So let's copy and paste and see how much, uh, how much we can take advantage of. So I come along and I say, OK, now I'm going to sit in S25 cent, and I'm going to say this. Let's look at the logic. If I'm in 25 cent, when's the only time I move? It's when I get a Q in, when I get a quarter. If I get it, I go to 50 cent. Otherwise, I just stay put. 
So if I get a quarter, Qn is equal to a one, I'm heading over to the 50 cent state. Otherwise, I'm just going to sit and stay here, 25 cent. I'm just going to stay in my current state. Hey, I just did two out of three. So now let's do this. Let's go in here and let's paste this. The final one that I have, my third state, is this, 50 cent. Think about this one. If I get a quarter, where do I go? I go to wait. Otherwise, I just sit in my same state. All right, I can handle that. If I get a quarter, I'm going to go back to S wait. Otherwise, I'm just going to sit in my same state. All right, we got to be good. We got to do a win others, even though we've explicitly we've covered all the cases. So now I do a win others where you want to go. Always go back to whatever your reset state was. So S wait, even though if you ever do this, you're in trouble. So I do end, end case. I already got my end process, not even close. Come over here, end process. Let's clean up these errors before we go to the next process. So I'm going to go ahead and say boom, boom, file selected. Oh, no errors. Nice. All right, now let's come down here and see if we can take advantage of some copy and paste in. We're going to do the output logic. But you know what's pretty sweet? I've already created a process that has a lot of what I want in it. So, I, for example, I have an output process. If I copied and pasted this, current state is in the sensitivity list, QN is in the sensitivity list, <clears throat> DN is in the sensitivity list. So I've got that covered. I also have a case statement which has all of the states listed. All I need to do is update my if then. So I think I will take advantage of copying this process and let's just see what happens. So now I'm gonna out, I'm gonna update this. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna say output logic. Process current state and the two inputs, absolutely. Now, I need to look at this and think about what's actually happening. <clears throat> if I am sitting in wait, who are the outputs that I'm actually gonna drive? I have dispense and change, okay? So what I need to do is if I see D in, a dollar in, I am going to drive my two outputs, which are called dispense, it's going to get a one, and change is going to get a one. Otherwise, what? Otherwise, don't do anything with them. So otherwise, I'm just going to do that. Make these zeros. How's that look? Does that kind of make sense logically? <clears throat> I'm sitting in wait. If I see DN, I'm going to give dispense and change a yank high. Otherwise, I leave them low. And that's it. Now let's think about this. I've got my if then statement all, all ready here. So I'm going to go ahead and nuke this so that all my things are good. Now I'm sitting in 25 cent. <clears throat> what should I do? Nothing. Okay. You don't assert any outputs at this state. You should keep dispense and change just sitting at a zero. So I just update those to be zeros. And now I go on to my third and final state. If I get down to here though, now I'm in 50 cent. <clears throat> Let's paste this in. Let's think about what I do here. I only assert dispense if I get a quarter. So now in this if then statement, what I do is I'm now looking at Q in. And if I get it, I'm going to dispense, but no change because they just gave me 75 cents exactly. I have now almost finished this other than I should clean up, I should have a win others. What do you want to do when others? Let's certainly not give out quarters or water. Let's just hang out. All right, we have some compiling to do to clean up these syntax errors. <laughs> what syntax errors? All right, now we're ready. Here we go. We are going to come into here and we are going to load up the simulation. So I load up bending. Now, it would be neat to know what the vending machine test bench is doing. Come down here. It's going to do, it's going to assert QN, then it's going to assert QN, then it's going to assert QN, and we should see something pop out. Okay, so we're going to test whether you put quarters in and if that works or not. Okay, all right. So I come into here and I'm going to add two wave signals in design. I nuke all my test bench ones because they're redundant. And now I'm going to run this guy and let's see what happens. Boom, boom. Aha! Next state isn't that interesting, so I look at this. Oh, baby, look at this. 
Here's QN. I'm sitting in wait, sitting in wait, sitting in wait. Here comes a quarter. I go ahead and move to state 25 cent. I don't give him anything though until another quarter comes in. I go to 50 cent state. Don't give him anything. Boom, they give me a third quarter. I'm gonna pop them out a bottle of water by a certain dispense. <laughs> then I go back and wait. If you put a dollar in, look at right there. It was already in there and we just saw it. So there, we did it. We have now modeled the vending machine, finite state machine.